Hello everyone. Welcome back to all new, an all new video of USMLE to residency. So this video is about hyperkalemia. Um, in this video I will tell you about the causes of hyperkalemia, EKG changes in hyperkalemia and the treatment of hyperkalemia in with the help of some mnemonics and visual aids and I hope by the end of this video you will know about the causes, EKG changes and treatment and you will not find any trouble whatsoever in answering any question about hyperkalemia in the US MLE. So let's get started with the video. Let the game begin. Okay, yeah. Causes. As you can see I've made this uh, small mnemonic kind of a thing which says K die. If you have increased potassium, you die. And that is true. Uh, excess potassium is lethal. And uh, I've made this kind of tried to make this EKG using my mouse, which is not that good. But I want to show here is that you have uh, peaked T waves. You do not have P waves. And your QRS complex gets widened if there is excess potassium in your circulation and extracellular fluid. So what does this KDAI refer to? Let's this K here refers to kidney pathologies. Sorry. D refers to drugs. A refers to aldosterone and I refers to injury. So uh, let's do them one by one. Cell lysis or cell injury or cell death. As uh, we know that potassium is uh, predominantly an intracellular cation. So any cause that causes cell damage, cell injury or cell lysis would lead to leakage of potassium out of the cells into the extracellular space. So uh, there can be a multitude of reasons to call or causes of cell death or cell lysis but I would quote mainly these three which are uh, most commonly asked or uh, you know seen. First is tumor lysis syndrome uh, due to chemotherapy. Uh, next is crush injuries or traumas or accidents causing uh, muscle, cell, muscle cell death and raising potassium and third is bones bones can also cause hyperkalemia next move we move on to kidney pathologies kidney pathologies like glomerulonephritis are acute or chronic renal failure renal failure uh, because kidneys uh, cause excretion of potassium out of the body and if they are not functioning there is hyperkalemia next is aldosterone as we all know uh, aldosterone's uh, main function is to uh, increase resorption of uh, sodium and to excrete potassium out of the body. So in any condition uh, that leads to deficiency of aldosterone, like in Addison's disease, if there is low aldosterone in body, uh, then potassium is not excreted. So it is retained in the body and there is hyperkalemia. And finally there are a few drugs uh, which I've mentioned here, ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, NSAIDs, antibiotics like trimethoprim, and antiparasitic drug agents like pentamidine. Uh, these drugs cause hyperkalemia. So, uh, if there is a kidney pathology and you give these drugs, there is a very good chance that patient will develop hyperkalemia. So, be careful about that. So, these are the mainly four causes: cell lysis, causing leakage of potassium out of the cell, uh, kidney pathologies, low aldosterone, and a few drugs they cause hyperkalemia and increase extracellular potassium in the body uh, any other cause um, maybe but these are the main causes anyhow let's go to the next slide which are which is about the EKG changes so EKG changes uh, first of all when there is a moderate hyperkalemia you mainly see uh, flat P waves and peaked T waves peaked T waves are a characteristic of hyperkalemia this they help you uh, identify hyperkalemia uh, as you can see I tried uh, try to draw some uh, EKGs with my mouse again which are not very good but uh, you can see there is a peaked T wave in all of them here 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 and here too and there in this one I have tried to show that there are no P waves so First of all, you will uh, be able to see these two EKG changes, and then when potassium levels rise further, there is widening of the QRS complex, 
and it keeps on winding and winding and ultimately when there is too much of potassium you get these weird sinusoidal EKG patterns uh, which look nowhere uh, near being an EKG but uh, you get these sinusoidal kind of patterns so these are the main EKG changes you have flat P waves you have peaked T waves and uh, there is a widening of QRS complexes and ultimately there is a sinusoidal pattern on the EKG so this is it about the EKG changes and causes next we will go for the treatment yeah here treatment I've made another mnemonic send K in or out so as we all know in hyperkalemia there is excess potassium in the extracellular fluid and we gotta get rid of it because it's toxic especially it's toxic to the heart and it causes a toxicity I would also like to mention an interesting fact which is which is kind of cruel but in many countries they use uh, hyperkalemia to give death penalty uh, as a way of execution you know uh, if you if they have a if someone has got death penalty as uh, punishment from the law uh, they in they don't hang him they infuse a lethal dose of potassium and the victim dies so anyhow so let's go to the treatment for fibrocholemia uh, send K in or out so either you send that potassium inside back inside the cell from extracellular space or you throw it out of the body so how do you throw uh, send it inside the cell you can see use an insulin and glucose infusion insulin causes uh, opening of the eight sodium potassium ADPS channel and insulin causes entry of potassium back inside the cells from outside but you do not want the patient to go into hypoglycemic shock and uh, hypoglycemia so uh, we give an uh, infusion of insulin along with glucose that helps to maintain glucose levels and second way you can uh, send potassium back inside the cells is use by using some beta 2 agonists like albuterol and salbuterol so these are the ways you can send potassium inside the cells from extracellular space or you can throw potassium out of the body using diuresis and dialysis diuresis you can use any diuretic like furosemide uh, you can use loop diuretics or you can use uh, thiazide diuretics but you should not use obviously you should not use potassium sparing diuretics yeah that was the fifth reason I was thinking about so so you can use diuretics to get rid of potassium or you can uh, finally if kidneys have failed and then you can go for dialysis so these are the two ways you can uh, uh, throw potassium out of the body and using insulin and glucose infusion or albuterol and beta 2 agonists you can send potassium inside the cells and then this is chi uh, this is uh, an oral agent this can this is used this is used to uh, throw potassium out the gastrointestinal tract uh, it is uh, it binds to potassium and potassium uh, leaves the uh, gastrointestinal tract and it's not absorbed it can be given orally or it can be given as an rectal anema and finally the C in send refers to calcium uh, if you suspect cardiotoxicity you can give calcium chloride or calcium gluconate and that uh, stabilizes the membrane of cardiac muscle or any muscle so as we know potassium is excitatory and it can lead to ventricular fibrillation and uh, arrhythmias and it can cause lethal cardiotoxicity so in order to prevent them give calcium as calcium chloride or calcium gluconate so treatment of hyperkalemia C send C for calcium K for chiaxalate N for insulin and glucose uh, and uh, out you can use uh, diuretics uh, and you can use dialysis also you can have decreased intake of potassium to control your excess potassium uh, uh, labeled it as the three D's diuretics decreased intake dialysis and this is the treatment so we have uh, causes cellulosis kidney pathologies aldosterone is low 
drugs like ACE inhibitors, ARBs, NSAIDs, Cymetoprim and Pentamidine. These drugs cause hyperkalemia or cell lysis due to any cause. It can cause hyperkalemia. And EKG changes. There's flat P waves, peaked T waves and widened QRS complexes. Then send potassium in or out. You use calcium or kyaxalate, insulin and glucose infusion. Uh, you can use diuretics and dialysis and decrease intake. So these were the causes and EKG changes and treatment of hyperkalemia. Uh, let me show you two more slides. Simple one. Uh, potassium is an intracellular ion and this is leads to uh, leakage of potassium out of the cell and there is hyperkalemia. And this is the EKG changes shown in a better way, not like my drawing. Uh, first of all, there are tall peaked T waves as you can see and then in addition to it you have loss of P waves and then finally there is widening of the QRS complex with tall T waves from the beginning. So these are the EKG changes in hyperkalemia. So this was my small uh, presentation on hyperkalemia to show you the main causes, EKG changes and treatment of hyperkalemia. I uh, hope you found it useful and uh, I'll see you next time in my new video on some new topic about the USMLE or some uh, study topic. Uh, till then, uh, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe below and don't forget to uh, join me on my Facebook page to get latest updates and info about the USMLE and see you next time with an all new video. Till then. Have a great day, have a great time.